Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how to put your Active Armor cast on and off. Uh, so this one, as you can see, is the removable option like a splint. So it's got these little bungees. Uh, and you can see how it's hooked around these little hooks, just like that. And with the removable option, you if you're showing the patient how to put it on themselves, you're gonna make sure they bring the toggles back, not all the way to the end so that they have a little loop that they can grab onto. So just pull the toggles most of the way down, but leave a little loop. And you're gonna leave it like that, and then they're gonna be able to stretch it just like this to be able to slide the device on and off easily, just like that. And then they can grab the little loop, just like this. See how I stick my middle finger in there? And then I pinch the toggle, slide it up all the way snug to the end. So the toggle's right up against there. Then I'm gonna put the loop, put the loop over the hook, okay? You don't wanna just grab this loop and try to put it over the hook because that's not gonna hold it secure enough. You wanna slide the toggle up, snug it up tight, then put the loop over the hook and you can do that on all four sides. Super easy to put on and off, but make sure they snug that toggle right up there and then put that over the loop and then you can push that little toggle out of the way, okay? That's how you put on and off the removable option, okay? And then let me show you how to do it if it's non-removable. If you wanna lock them into it, it's still removable, but it locks them in for compliance. So. If you want it to be like a cast for a patient to have them locked into it, uh, you can use, as you can see here, these little zip ties are hidden inside there. So in your toolbox, you're gonna have a toolbox that if you're providing clinic, you get a toolbox and it has a bunch of things in it. One of them is this little color sample so that you can let, we have 11 colors right now. We can always order more if you have a special team that you want colors for, um, 11 colors. And we give you this little sample so the patients can look at them and pick which color they want and get a feel for what the colors are. Um, that's gonna be in your toolbox. In your toolbox, you're also gonna get a tape measure that has centimeters on it to make sure that you can get good measurements on the patient during the scan. And you're going to get a washable marker that you can use to draw on the patient for the scan uh, and then uh, some other accessories just like extra zip ties uh, and extra spacers and extra bungees all of which and some plastizole all of which comes with each patient cast but we put extra in there just in case you ever need it. So with the zip ties how you're going to put them on is and I'm going to show you on this one because it doesn't have any in there you're gonna take the zip tie and you see how there's one side that's flat and one side that has a hook on it, uh, whether it's for a wrist or a leg cast. You're gonna always put the zip tie in the hook side. So the side that the hook is on, you're gonna slide it up in there. And the reason for that is the head can hide now into underneath the hook in that little slot, okay? So hopefully you can see this on the white one. So I'm gonna slide the zip tie up through the holes underneath the hook side, just like that. And then on the other side, see how there's two holes? I'm gonna curve the zip tie back around and go back in through the other hole, okay? Just so it's like that and like this coming out the other side, okay? Then you're gonna take this end and you're gonna feed it into the zip tie head. I'm gonna I'll hold it up for you if you can't see it while it's down here. Okay, just like that. So do you see how I fed it through the head just like that? And you're gonna pull and have it tighten. This, when you tighten it, the zip tie head is gonna fit nicely underneath into that little cubby slot. And then you can cut it off either with scissors or with the nail clippers, or we give you some little clippers that have a nice needle nose that lets you cut it off real close down into that. And cut that end off, okay? And you're gonna do that on all of the sides. And in a moment, I'm gonna show you how to put spacers in also. So let's say that when it's clamshelled down onto them, the spacers, um, let's say that it's real tight, like it's tight in one spot, which could happen because you have edema coming up and down and um, it doesn't mean that you measured wrong or the scan was bad, it just means that sometimes uh, people have swelling that comes up and down or they have muscle atrophy or whatever and you're gonna wanna make adjustments and that's fine. Or if they have bumping and rubbing, let's say it fits fine, but they feel like it's bumping in some spot, you might wanna add a little bit of space and then give them a little bit of ex add extra space for padding, which you can always do. So if you wanna add space, let's say it's too tight and you don't wanna zip tie it down there, you have these little spacers, they look like little Legos. 
you can take these little spacers and you can pop them in right here at those seams, okay? Now, this does not work for the removable, the bungee option. I'll show you how to space those. This one is for the zip ties if you're locking it on, okay? Do you see how I popped a little spacer in there? And then you're gonna take your zip tie and you're gonna run it through the cast and the spacer, okay? So do you see how the spacer's in there? I'm gonna run it through here just like that. Do the exact same thing. You can stack these spacers. Look at this one. This one has two in there. So you can stack as few as you want to make as little or as much space as you want anywhere in the cast, okay? You're going to run it through the spacer, run it back up through, um, and you're going to pop it through the hole just like this. And we also give you a needle nose pliers that you can use to grab the end and pull and tighten it down if you need to. It kind of helps a little bit. Um, and then use your little clippers or whatever to clip the end off just like that, okay? So that's how you're going to put it on them if they don't need space and here's how you're gonna add space to it as needed, okay? Let's say it's a removable splint like this and you won't need to add some space. Let's say it's a little bit tight in one spot. You are given Plastizote um, and you get it in a couple of different thicknesses. Uh, so this one is a quarter inch thick. This is the thicker. So let's say I needed to add some space and you're gonna wanna cut a little rectangle as long, as thick as the seam of the cast. Let's say that wearing this, it was a little tight in, I had a little bit of swelling come up, so it's a little bit tight in the palm area. So I'm going to wanna take this little piece of quarter inch plastizote and I am going to apply it right into the seam, right where it's tight, just like that. Now, when I pull this tight, slide it up there and hook it over the hook, as you can see, it's given me a little bit of extra space right here by bivalving it. Now I've got extra space in here. I'll close this up so you can see. You can do that on either side or both sides of the cast, depending on how much space you need. Um, and you can move that around. Like let's say it was tight the whole way down. I could put two more pieces right here and right here and give myself more space. I could also do some pieces here uh, and give myself even more space. And that is super easy to do uh, if it's too tight in any area. You just take a little bit more of this plastizote and apply it just inside the seam, just like this. And that will keep the cast bivalved and give you some space without pinching you um, or the patient, okay? So that's how you are going to accommodate by adding space. So with the locked on cast, you're gonna use um, the little Lego spacers and with the removable cast, you will use the plastizote down the seam and then you can take that in and out, okay? Now, let's say that the cast is too loose in some area. Um, let's pretend that it's too loose. The cast comes to you, I'll use this one, this one fits me. Let's say that you get the patient, the, the patient comes and it's a little bit loose right around here. You see a little bit of a gap and you don't like that. Now, first thing I would do is say, make sure the patient, you put the patient in their functional position and how they're gonna move and make sure there's still a gap because that skin can move around and then it might be too tight in a different area. If you have it in one position and it's too loose, it might be too tight when they go like this. So make sure they check and see that it's, you know, that it really needs uh, to be tightened up in a spot so it's not too tight when they reposition. And usually it should be perfect if you um, measure, if you put it on and they hold in the position that you measured them or scanned them because that's how we fit it to their arm. So unless they had edema coming up and down, that should fit perfectly according to your measurements, okay? Um, if it's loose and it needs some tightening up, uh, you can see here how I cut this plastizote and you have different thicknesses. So depending on how much uh, tightening you need, you can cut it into little strips. So this one is the thinner. So let's say it's just a little bit of ga gap or there's a, you just need a little bit of cushioning. You can cut it into strips just like this and you can add it right around this perimeter of the seam. Just take that adhesive off the back, put it right around this perimeter 
on each half of the clamshell and then tighten it up. You can see I used a quarter inch plastizote all the way around and this tightened it by a full inch, right? So that's plenty of, you know, you can tighten quite a bit. On the back of the hand, you can apply a little bit right here. If it bumps on their knuckles, um, if they put on the cast and because it fit to their knuckle and not this gap below their, the um, perimeter below their knuckle, it might be a little loose underneath. So you can always apply a bit of plastizo in and around that hole to tighten that up. So in case they have a little bit too much thumb movement. Okay. So if I didn't like that thumb movement there, I could take a tiny strip just like this, take the adhesive off the back and apply it right around this thumb hole on the inside of the cast, just like that. Now, this is waterproof adhesive backed foam. It's a uh, closed cell, so it's not gonna hold any moisture. It's just like packing peanut. Um, and this is Plastizote, they use it in orthotics. So uh, it won't cause any skin irritation or anything unless you feel like you get some water trapped in underneath it. Uh, so you wanna manage patient expectations to make sure that they know to keep it clean and dry underneath the cast. Now this material is biocompatible. It's the same plastic as Legos, ABS. So it's not gonna cause any skin reaction itself. Uh, but if they get something trapped under it, then it could cause a skin breakdown or if they get moisture stuck under it, they can. So um, make sure that when it fits, that they know to, they can blow down there with a hairdryer if they need to, if it doesn't all just drain out comfortably. Um, I live in Colorado where it's dry and I wore mine for two weeks. I never blew down there with a hairdryer. It never trapped any moisture and it was fine. Um, but in a more humid area, it may, uh, you know, kind of hold wetness underneath a little bit. Um, and if it does, just make sure that they keep it clean and dry under there. Like I said, a hairdryer is fine. Um, so as you can see, once you make the adjustments, what if there is like, the cool thing about Active Armor is you can see their skin through the cast. So in a traditional cast, if they're, they had edema that went down in the wrist, you wouldn't be able to see that and adjust for it. Um, so you wouldn't know. All you can see is the palm or down here. You can't see what's going on underneath it, whether that's an infection or edema or whatever. With Active Armor, you can see that. So if my wrist started having some movement in there because edema went down, I could easily um, take some of the quarter inch plastizo like this and take four little squares of it just like that and pop it into the cast right around that exposure for my owner head, my owner styloid right here. And I could take these four little squares and I could pop them right around the four corners of this hole and that would tighten it right up. So I'm gonna put four little squares right around this hole, if you can see that. And that's gonna tighten that whole wrist area up for me by a quarter of an inch, okay? Try that on again. Okay, do you see how that is now tightening it up? So now when I put this on, I didn't leave myself a loop to grab, so let me fix that. Make it easier for me to put on by myself. So now you can see how it stretches, easy to put on. And then I'm going to grab this loop, grab the toggle, slide it on, easy and you're gonna see how it's super tightened up in that wrist area. See that? Look at that holds it, tightened it right up there so I can no longer move my wrist. Okay, so that's a really good way to tighten it up. Now, almost always with the AFOs and walking boots, you're gonna to wanna to put a piece of Plastizote right here where the front of that shin bone is because that can need some padding there. Um, so sometimes if there's not enough space for padding, you can always put a spacer in on the side and then add padding, right? So if there's ever bumping, but there's not space for padding, no problem, add space on the side and then put a little padding in. Even if it's on a splint and you wanna pad it up here, but there's no room, you can uh, bivalve it, give yourself some space and then you'll have more room for padding, okay? 
so a little bit of each. So that's how you do fittings and adjustments.